191 calls expected this cruise season and the cruise line say they've taken protective measures against Ebola. The Prime Minister defends a decision to rename Melville Hall Airport after two former Prime Ministers and former planning committee members propose ways the Creole Festival can be improved. I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details after this. Dominica. Upgrade so lame. Upgrade. Up, 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 up. You've got a $60 million upgrade. With this massive upgrade to our network, we're making Dominica one of the best connected countries in the world. Giving you greater reliability and 100% super fast 4G coverage. Upgrade to Lime! Upgrade, upgrade Dominica. Upgrade to 100% super fast 4G coverage. My hours pointing off. Live within your means. If you constantly find yourself needing credit to get you to the next payday, you are living beyond your means. Reevaluate your budget and talk to your banker or someone else who can help you get your finances straight. This house was first purchased by the Robinsons, who then sold it to Indra Ford in 2007. She loved baking. But last year, she forgot to turn off the stove. Luckily, Sajiko General was there to help rebuild. So now, the house will smell of sweetbread again for a long, long time. We know this house like we know every house we insure. Across the land, throughout the region, we've been there. Sajiko General, wise financial thinking for life. Rum. We mix them, them, rum. them, them, rum. them, 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 with anything. White Oak, when it pours, you rain. Christmas at Courts to make the season right, where you'll find all things shiny and bright. The perfect gift for someone dear. The aroma of Christmas goodies is in the air. Whether big or small, for friend or family, we have it all to make the season merry with something special just for you. Courts is the place you must come to. The Courts Ultimate Christmas is finally here. Let's help you bring in the seasonal cheer. Courts, bringing value home. In the news, the new cruise season officially opened Tuesday with one cruise ship in port. Idona John Baptist has this report. Tourism authorities expect 191 cruise ship calls for the 2014-2015 cruise season. On Tuesday, Tourism Minister Ian Douglas cut the ribbon at a ceremony on the Roseau cruise ship berth to mark the start of the cruise season. Discover Dominica Authority has conducted a series of trainings for 192 tourism service providers in all classes of the sector in preparation for the tourist arrivals. We took the opportunity to enhance our stakeholders to better prepare them for the season in terms of as it relates to guest experiences that has been compromised in the past based on reports that we've gotten, based on discussions with these cruise executives when we go to the various conferences. We heard the cruise line in discussions with them mentioned that we have a very good product. They love Dominica, it's unique from the other Caribbean islands in terms of the, the, the sights and our natural beauty and all of that, or warm and friendly places. But at the end of the day, the experiences are sometimes not as they would like, it doesn't meet the expectations. These issues for cruise lines include easy access around town for tourists and harassment by vagrants. Vagrancy in Roseau has been a long-standing issue for the tourist industry. Every year, the matter comes up, but action to resolve it has had to take careful planning. Some of the reasons that have kept the process back is legislation. We have been told that the vagrants, they do have they have rights. And some of the reasons that have kept the process back is legislation. We have been told that the vagrants they do have, they have rights. One of the um, solution that we, so one of the things that we thought was a solution to the problem, it became even a, a bigger problem. To physically move them to locations on cruise ship days, those who are misbehaving, 
that was a problem because on what grounds, you know? They mean we don't have we don't have a, a proper facility to have them kept. They cannot be arrested. If they're arrested, they have to be released maybe the next day. The next day there's a ship and it's compromised. And the, the whole problem is compounded. The Ministry of Health, they're putting up cabinet paper together to get some of the issues addressed. A new reception facility at Tito Gorge and road rehabilitation at various tourist sites are among recent site upgrades. Idona John Baptist, Channel 5 News. And as the country goes into high gear to welcome cruise visitors, tourism service providers cannot separate themselves from concern over the threat of Ebola. The Air and Seaport Authority, Benoit Badwil, told Channel 5 News Tuesday, the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association and the Cruise Lines International Association, which represents all cruise lines, have taken protective measures. They have enforced certain provisions in terms of the, the Ebola-stricken countries and the um, decisions that they have taken in terms of those persons not coming onto the ship. They have also persons who travel within these areas must meet a 21-day um, incubation period. So they have communicated to us the standards that they have implemented. In other news now, the Prime Minister insists Dominica cannot continue to have its main airport named after a slave owner as the country seeks reparation for slavery. He spoke during Monday's airport renaming ceremony. Skerritt says that Dominica owes a debt of gratitude for the contribution of the two late Prime Ministers for initiating the rehabilitation and expansion of this airport. It is they who took the first steps to have this major airport project up and running. We who came after them took over the battle from them and continued the race. He says the renaming was important for Dominica's national self-respect, pride and patriotism, which is crucial to economic and social development. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister made an announcement on plans for construction of an international airport. We have signed an MOU with a private sector company in the People's Republic of China to build the long-anticipated international airport using the built... using the build, operate and transfer model. The Prime Minister says it was impossible to leave the airport in its previous state if they were to meet the goal of building an international airport. If something were not done quickly to improve Melville Airport, our standing would have been downgraded by the International Air Transport Authority, IATA and our capacity to provide air access and attract new airlines or even to maintain the ones that we had would have been severely challenged. Earlier this year, Skerritt said the international airport would be located on a site proposed by the Dominica Freedom Party. The Prime Minister did not say when construction of in uh, the Prime Minister did not say when construction of the international airport would begin. And daughter of the late Prime Minister Pierre Charles says it's fitting that her father be jointly remembered or honoured with the late Prime Minister Roosevelt Douglas. Pfizer Charles Sylvester in her address at the airport renaming ceremony says it means the world to her family that her father will be remembered every time the airport is mentioned. The names Pierre Charles and Roosevelt Douglas will once again receive not just national but international recognition. They will now become household names to all who travel to and through our amazing country. Sister of the late Roosevelt Douglas, Joyce Dare, received the scroll on behalf of the Douglas family. On behalf of the Douglas family, especially the siblings, the brothers and sisters of Rosie Douglas, I would like to thank the government for this gesture, great gesture, and we are honored as a family to be associated with it. Four siblings of the late Prime Minister Roosevelt Douglas were present at the ceremony. When I was asked, I was a little doubtful because I said I live in Barbados actually. I felt that somebody on the ground would have um, come forward and I came here, not really thinking that I would be asked to say a few words, but um, I'm happy to do so. 
None of his sons were present at the renaming ceremony. And three people who have served on the planning committee of the World Creole Music Festival are proposing ways in which its organization can be improved. The World Creole Music Festival was born out of an idea aimed at increasing tourist arrivals in the country and stimulating the economy or economic activity during the independent season. The planning of the 18th edition met with varying difficulties from the banning of Nigerian artist Flavor and his ban due to the Ebola threat and the cancellation of a top act, Jamaican Movado. Band member of uh, Triple K, Emil Deputa, says the event has come a long way. He says the punctual start of the event is commendable, but has his reservations about the technical aspect. I believe that we have invested enough in terms of song systems in Dominica that you can have the local guys come together right, and provide the sound for the festival. I believe there would be a great savings on that. What I believe we need to hire is a production crew a foreign production crew because I do not believe that we have the expertise as yet with any of the song systems and I mean all of them we do not have the, the expertise in terms of the production crew to get things going to get the song check going to to one crew finishes up at night and starts the song check at the following morning because it takes a, a serious crew to do that I do not believe the guys have the discipline right as yet for us to do something like that. McCarthy Marie who has 30 years in the music business told Channel 5 News. I would think there was a bit of a drop in the standard of the presentation of the festival. By that I mean the festival really is the song and light. Yes and if the song is not up to par it certainly impairs the experience of the Patrons, last year it was terrible. They say it was a bit better, but still wasn't up to the standards we've had in the past. And most importantly, it's a show, not a tell or a hear, which means the visual aspect is of extreme importance. And we practically had no stage lighting for this year, no concert lighting for this year. So the lighting was mediocre. And I think, um, I don't know if that was on because the organizers were trying to reduce expenses, but I think that was not such a good move to have lower the standard of the presentation of the event. He says Destra saved the face of the Trinidad Soca artists on Saturday night. And this business about them coming with the backup singing with half a band and half of the music in a sequence is nonsense. And I think the festival organizers probably ought to put that in the contract that you have to play all your music live. The people who are singing must be there on the stage because the backup vocals, when they were doing the, the thing from the sequence, uh, was sounding not nice. And the point of fact, it went out of time a couple of times. You had to start again. If you noticed that, but I noticed it. Dr. Valder Henry wrote an in-depth article on a review of the WCMF, which was published on Dominica News Online on Tuesday. She once took care of the finances of the WCMF many years ago. To what extent do we explore the world looking for this Creole music and introducing new, new acts to, to, to Dominica, new acts to, this, to the world stage? Is it that we're just going to be comfortable with the same names? I know some persons will say, well, people won't come if there's not a name to draw them. And that may be so, but if we, we begin the education and say, yes, there's a name, but it's also to, it's the exposure of new things. I think even in terms of value for money for the organizers of the, of, of the World Music Creole Festival, I mean, I have no inside details about what is paid to anybody, but I think we can get you know, some good value for money exposing um, and looking around the world. You're watching Channel 5 News will continue after this. I'm the first to leave town. I'm the first to go to university. I'm the first to feel this is where I belong. The first to make them this proud. And the first to start a career that will lead to better things for me and my family. With 23 degrees of study and 60 scholarships exclusively for Caribbean students, St. George's University is your chance to be first. This and every Wednesday, come on down to Point Michel at Melvinas Bar for Reggae Night. Yes, come get your famous steamed fish, fried fish and your cold drinks from the sponsors. Don't you ever say there's nowhere to go in the midweek again. 
Melvinus Restaurant and Bar is the place to be each and every Wednesday night from 7 p.m. till. See you there. Trust me, fellas. HIV is for real. Don't take chances. It's not worth it. Use a condom every time, fellas. The choice is yours. Don't take chances. I play it safe. I use a condom every time. You should as well. Shopping is a lot easier with Courts Ready Finance. Choose what you want from our wide range of quality products and we take care of the rest. Courts Ready Finance's affordability means there's no deposit. There's no need for a lump sum of cash. It's flexible, which means you choose your payment term and you're guaranteed the lowest monthly payments anywhere. Best of all, it's easy. Easy to get and easy to pay. Shop at Courts today and get what you want hassle-free. Courts Ready Finance. Easy, affordable, flexible. The Subaru Forester, fully reimagined for 2014, introduces new vehicle dynamic controls for a stable control system with flexible storage space, spacious and quality interior design. Not to mention its fuel efficiency. 32 miles per gallon and 250 horsepower combines both luxury and performance in one. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, let's move on to local government, uh, where a consultant has been discussing a harmonized approach to local government authorities. The Department of Local Government and Community Development conducted a stakeholders consultation on local government reform on Tuesday. It is quite fitting here today in keeping with the theme for our independence, our nation, our responsibility, to participate in this discourse collectively with the consultant, Mr. Ilu Charles to provide feedback on the findings of the local government reform exercise. Fontaine says the consultant, Mr. Ilu Charles, will give an update on the reviews conducted and will make the suitable recommendations. The thrust of the reform is basically evolutionary and not revolutionary, in the sense that the focus has been in terms of education, and as had, has been explained by the minister, to highlight certain basic principles of local government, such as transparency, integrity, and accountability. And at the same time, to re-emphasize the point that local government has to work with the central government. Local government reform has become a household phrase since the first exercise was taken in 1999 through the collaborative efforts of Systems Caribbean Limited and the Caribbean Development Bank. As we seek to make the system more relevant, modernized, effective and efficient, we must be mindful, mindful and at the same time be encouraged to recognize that there is political will. There has always been political will as far as local government is concerned, a system that has over 100 years. Schillingford assured the stakeholders that cabinets will go through the recommendation presented and determine the course of action for swift implementation. And moving closer to your pocket now, if you are one of those people who eat a lot of bread, you'll need to take some extra money along when you next visit the bread depot. As of Tuesday, the price of white bread has gone up by 20%. The price of the white mastiff and the hot dog bread have all increased. Um, you can see the small the mastiff small is now one, one dollar, it's one twenty-five. The big mastiff used to be one seventy-five, now it's two twenty-five. The butter bread used to be two fifty, now it's three dollars. The white burger used to be fifty cents, now it's sixty-five cents. The white rolls used to be four for a dollar, now it's three for a dollar. The white rolls and the hot dogs. The reason for increasing that bread price is because all the ingredients are increasing and increasing at rapid rate. Each time you go to the, the wholesalers, you find that you pay an increase of 30%, 40%. And on every input of that increasing, you have the shortening increasing, you have the white flour increasing, you have the yeast increasing and you also have the butter increasing. These are essential ingredients to make the bread what it is. 
Birmingham says electricity and fuel costs can also contribute to an increase in the price of bread. He says the size of the white bread has also increased, but the price of brown flour products remain the same. We also wanted to find out how profitable the bread business really was. Anytime you go in, in, into, into business, you always, you always look for a profitable but And the terms of what you say, profitable, it's not something that you could say is a profitable business and all that. I mean, you survive. But every in industry has its challenges. And in the manufacturing industry, especially in Dominica, you know that cost of, 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 of even the basic utility is, is above and, and beyond. It takes, it takes skills and it takes um, ability to actually survive in, in that industry. Because the, um, basically you have seen bakeries open and they thought they were doing well and they have closed down. One customer says he does not mind the increase. Born and grew in Newton, and I always know Mr. Ruben place is very clean for rats, cockroach and things. He have guys, special guys coming on Fridays and Sundays and Saturdays to clean the place and make sure his bed very clean and nice. That's all I could say for Mr. Ruben. And so you don't mind the increase? I don't mind the increase now because the country is hard now. And everybody, if you can make, if you buy two bags of flour and you can't make a profit, you have to try to do something for yourself, huh? And Director of Trade Martin Walter says based on the fact that there's been 0% duty and no marked increase in the price of flour and the fact that the product comes from the OECS region, he cannot see why there's an increase in the price of bread at this time. Director of Trade Martin Walter says based on the fact that there's been 0% duty and no marked increase in the price of flour, and the fact that the product comes from the OECS region, he cannot evaluate why there's an increase in the price of bread at this time. He agrees that the increase in the price of bread may be linked to other production costs, but he says the increase cannot be attributed to an increase or any increase in the cost of white flour. Mr. Walter says the Minister of Trade does not control or regulate the price of flour, but it seeks to adhere to Dominica's obligations under the Treaty of Chagaramas, which protects certain industries within the least developed member states of CARICOM. The flour manufacturing industry is one of them. And on the entertainment scene, the music department of the Convent High School will award 20 people involved in the music industry for their contribution to music education locally. Convent High School is celebrating Music Week under the theme Music Makes Sense. From Monday, the school has been recognizing music educators and musicians and will continue to do so throughout this week. Tuesday's awardees, as seen in this picture from left, are Colton T., former Calypsonian Mighty Robbie, Norman Later of Swinging Stars Band, and Benji, who received the award on behalf of Triple K International. Others on the CHS awardees list are Pearl Christian, Cornell Phillip, and Mikael Henderson. In the week of the Creole week, Creole festival generally leading up to Creole Day, we've been having that. And trying to send to students towards music and music goals and recognizing the, what music does. So we usually choose a theme and go around the theme. But this year, I plan to bring in the music icon because I don't think the people are really recognized as much in Dominica and overseas. They are more or less welcomed. But here, we tend to just take them for granted. And our children, I mean, they are now the, the people that they look up to. And it was an opportunity for me to get them to think of the students when they are creating their music, creating their songs. because. We are doing music in school, we are analyzing the music, and we like music with lyrical content. Geoffrey Joseph of Triple K says his band has been working with the music students of CHS for some time. On the issue of lyrical content, he says the band has adjusted to appeal to criticism about their lyrics. During the World Creole Music Festival, Chubby of the Midnight Groovers took a hit at the type of lyrics of some local musicians. While he did not specifically name Triple K Band, his criticism applied to music they have produced. I don't have a problem with what he said. My, my issue is that um, we create or what we produce is party music. And at any fete or party, is a lot of whining, a lot of go down, a lot of jump and wave. 
So we have to create for that 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 genre. We have, we have to create that, that kind of music, you know, because that's what we that's the, the kind of music that we're creating. We are going to produce the more conscious lyric songs, you know, and um, stuff that will be more for a listening audience because a lot of the music that um do despite what um Chubby and them produce is nice party music as well. But then there's a lot of the music that they produce is very conscious. You'd sit and listen to it. And we have produced um, material like that and we intend on continuing producing material like that. But um I I don't I don't want to say I disagree with his, with his statements, but I think we you know we have our market that we are catering for and I don't think um we're gonna leave that market away. Well, the scattered showers we've been having seem to be associated with a tropical wave. Let's find out what's going on in, with your weather report next. The weather is brought to you by Sagico, wise financial thinking for life. Look, Mommy. Perfect. When you've been here, you know what's important. Protect it with Sagicor. Wise financial thinking for life. Shot. Down it goes. Let's get serious. When it comes to your fridge, being clean saves your money. Clean the sealers of your fridge regularly. If not, that energy is out of the door and you have been hit for a second. Clean the condenser coils at least twice a year so that your fridge doesn't have to work so hard. That saves you money. Not an easy shot to exit. Keep your freezer clean and clear of ice. Defrost regularly. Dominex money saving energy tip number six. Keep all parts of the fridge clean and save money. Hello, good evening. Welcome to tonight's weather. I'll be your presenter for this evening, Farrah Rock Career. We go straight into some earlier satellite imagery and what it showed was convection associated with a westward moving tropical wave interacting with an upper level trough which produced cloudy conditions throughout the day. We move on now to some earlier radar imagery and what it indicated was shower and thunderstorm activity throughout the day. The weather tonight is expected to be cloudy with some scattered showers and these conditions will persist into tomorrow. Maximum temperatures will pick up to 31 degrees Celsius. The marine conditions tomorrow, moderate and swells are expected to be up to 7 feet. The weather for the next three days, tomorrow, Wednesday, cloudy with scattered showers. A relative improvement is expected Thursday and Friday, partly cloudy, two cloudy conditions with some scattered showers expected. Unstable conditions will produce some showers and thunderstorm activity in the northern portion of the Lesser Antilles tomorrow. On the international scene, some Partly cloudy conditions with some showers expected in New York and London. Sunny conditions in Miami. Some thunderstorm activity in Caracas and partly cloudy conditions in Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 6 or 1 a.m. and sunset at 5.38 p.m. For more information, you could always visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Join us tomorrow evening for our next weather broadcast. Thank you. That's Channel 5 News. The headlines, 191 calls expected this cruise season. And cruise lines say they've taken protective measures against Ebola. The Prime Minister defends a decision to rename Melville Hall Airport after two former Prime Ministers. And former planning committee members propose ways the Creole Festival can be improved. Send us your questions and comments to news at martin2k4.com. Remember to download the uh, TurnUp767 app for instant access to the Channel 5 News package. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching.